Little darling, it's been a long, long racing season. Little darling, it's time to rest and find a home. Here comes the hounds, didn't you know? Here comes the hounds, and I say it's for life. Hounds for life. Hounds for life. Welcome to the Hounds for Life podcast. We are so thrilled that you have have you on board with our new show that we want to put up night fortnightly. It is a podcast about the, sharing the love for retired X-Racing Greyhounds as companions and to show you the beautiful area where Hounds for Life is situated. It's the top of the South Island in New Zealand and as I think it's the most beautiful um, place in the world. What do you say? Totally. I totally agree. And I am Maya. And I'm Shanna. And uh, we are excited to um, broadcast our first episode today. Yay! Fingers crossed! All right. So the title of this episode is... The title of this episode is Bella. And who even are we? So we want to explain you a little bit where we're coming from, where Hounds for Life is um, situated, what this even is. And uh, yeah, and about a little bit about us ourselves, aren't we? Mm-hmm. Okay, right. So, um, Shanna, why don't you start? Okay, so as I said, my name is Shanna. Uh, I have two beautiful greyhounds. Um, one we've had for over a year, and um, I've grown to love this wonderful breed. And I want to share it um, with the world. I want to share it globally, and I want to. Um, I want people to get to know this breed and what it's like to live with them as a pet and. Yeah, I just, I absolutely love them. They're wonderful. They are. I am uh, the owner of two greyhounds as well. Uh, it's Bella and Silky. I have Bella for almost uh, three years now and uh, Silky for a year. And uh, oh, I think uh, greyhounds are like potato chips. If you have one, you can't stop. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to become a hoarder one day, but let's try not to become a <laughs> um, <laughs> So in this episode, you will see an interview with Dan at Te Paranui, the permaculture homestead and animal sanctuary, where the Hounds for Life, um, uh, where Hounds for Life is actually situated. There are the kennels and the volunteers who are helping with fostering the greyhounds for Night Rave Greyhounds, which is up on the North Island, the rehoming agency. We are passionate about finding homes for the retired greyhounds. Um, as you might know or might not know, they have a very short racing a season and a very long life after. They do, and they need to spend it on the couch. They really do. <laughs> In each uh, episode, we, uh, we have several segments that we want to show you. And one of the segments is a talk, an interview or a personal talk to an expert who knows a lot about greyhounds. Because we love greyhounds, but we don't know everything about greyhounds, don't we? Mm -hmm. So we are, we are keen to learn everything about this very unique breed. Um, and we are very happy to share that with you guys. And then we also have another segment, which uh, is a how-to segment, where we are actually sharing crafty things with you. How to do... Um, some uh, handcrafts or paintings or anything around the greyhound, what you can use for your greyhound, make for your greyhound, do with your greyhound. Um, that's our how-to segment. Cool. And what else do we have? Um, so we also feature a foster of the week. Um, so the foster of the week is to get out into the world um, what, what greyhounds we actually have available for adoption. Uh, so this week we will be featuring a greyhound called Mary Lou. She's a super sweet girl and she is up for adoption. And we've taken some footage of us interacting with Mary Lou um, and we hope you guys really like it. She's absolutely wonderful. Each episode we also feature a greyhound that is retired from racing and is now rehomed. So we get the um, most amazing opportunities to go into people's homes and uh, interview them and their greyhounds. Uh, it's phenomenal. It's really phenomenal. It's beautiful to it see is. them be rehomed and um, live and lay on the couch and 
Late With Their Humans, and it's a phenomenal segment. And this week we are featuring Bella, which is Maya's greyhound. And then uh, at the end, you will also see a feature about the lifestyle here in New Zealand. We are starting in this episode with uh, Picton, which is the closest to us. Picton is a um, sea town or a marina, I say, yeah, you would say. Cathedral. <laughs> and uh, it is actually rated uh, under the top 10 uh, most beautiful uh, small um, marina towns in the world. And uh, we are very blessed that Hans for Life calls this the home. Very it is surrounded by the native bush of the Marlborough Sounds um, and the Marlborough Sounds are a beautiful landscape, uh, what, very unique. Very. Mm. Coming up next is an interview with Dan at Te Paranui Homestead and Animal Sanctuary. So we're going to take you on a little trip, <laughs> trip to see the animals, to see how things run there. We have a look at the kennels. It's interesting. Just come along and have a look. Fun. I'm here today. I'm here with Dan. Uh, he is the manager here at Te Paranui, the permaculture homestead and animal sanctuary. And this is actually the home for Hounds for Life. Um, so today we're just going to ask, did I say Dan or Danny? So today we're just going to ask him a few questions about where we are and what they do here. Um, and yeah, get to know him a little bit. So can you tell us a little bit about the origin of Te Paranui and the animal sanctuary? Sure. Um, well, I wasn't here at its start, um, but Maya's been running the project for a few years now, I think two or three years. Um, I guess it just started out with a few animals, um, would-be farm animals. They needed a place to, to live and just be free. Um, so, yeah, there were pigs and donkeys and alpacas uh, and a couple of horses. It's kind of grown a little bit since there um, and expanded into looking after some of the greyhounds. We built some kennels uh, a couple of years, or about a year ago now. Um, so we've been taking greyhounds from the North Island and just finding new homes for them in the South Island. Cool. Awesome. So should we take a look around? Yeah, let's go. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, we are. So how many animals have you actually got here at the moment? Uh, we got these Ooh. two donkeys, we have four sheep, we have four alpacas, um, two pigs, two horses, miniature horses, and uh, one cow. Wow. Yeah. So that's a okay, so tell me a little bit about the Hounds for Life program. How did it start? Um, I think it started with uh, Maya having her own greyhounds and having an enthusiasm for or being with them and having them as pets um, and from there I guess uh, a group of people used to race the greyhounds or just run them actually not race them um, in our paddock here mm -hmm. um, and then from there um, Maya started talking to uh, Nightrave on the North Island uh, about potentially fostering some down here. Cool okay so this is clearly where the fosters sleep. Yeah um it's awesome so you built these yeah we built these me and the volunteer cool that's amazing and they've got like little hangers for their water or a house at the back that's cool um and my last okay so this is the final question um so what do you guys foresee for the future of Tukaranui? Well, um, we obviously continue continuing to foster greyhounds mm -hmm. and look after our animals. Um, and while we're doing that, we're trying to develop our permaculture site and make it a learning center or grounds for educational programs, uh, mostly in permaculture and sustainable living. Awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. Thank you so much for being interviewed by us today. It was so awesome to talk to you. Thanks for coming awesome. down. No worries, it was such a pleasure. Awesome. Right. See ya. <laughs> See ya. So now we're going to cut to Bella and how she 
spends her time. We're going to interview Maya, who is her owner, as previously said, and we're going to see what my what sorry Bella gets up to, what her unique traits are, maybe what her favorite food is. So yeah, let's head over. <laughs> Hi, my name is uh, Maya. I'm living here in the beautiful Marlborough Sounds since about nine years with uh, my family and the dogs. Bella came to us three years ago and she was my first greyhound. I had an Australian Shepherd dog and a mini Fox Terrier and a little designer toy at that time. And I decided we have space for another dog who needs a home and I came across the retired X-Racing Greyhounds that are available for adoption. And I met Bella, my first grand, and I instantaneously fell in love with her and with the race um, of greyhounds in general. So we took her home and she fit beautifully in our tribe. Um, however, there were some problems with the Australian Shepherd Dog. Apparently, I have heard that quite often that Collies and Aussies, they do not like a quite a dog that is faster than them to play with. So we had some issues with that, but um, that's all been solved. And other than that, we have a cat as well. So I had to be aware about the cat, how to train the dog and the cat to like each other, which was no problem with Bella. It took us, I don't know, I barely remember it. It wasn't a hassle at all. And um, uh, this is how she came to stay forever. Such a happy Greyhound owner. <laughs> she brings so much joy in our life. She came very young. She was two years old. She has been raised, but not for very long. And um, she was just wanting to hang out with humans, obviously. And that's what she gets. The daily routine with Bella is like with all other dogs. Um, we are getting up at around eight o'clock. We have the school run and then um, they're gonna get fed. They have a light breakfast because they haven't done much um, before breakfast and they don't have a big appetite. Um, and then they, but then enough that they fell into their morning, second morning snooze after that while I work, which is perfect because they are normally well behaved and quiet. Bella is the quietest of them all. And she's actually the alpha dog, so she rules the whole tribe. Um, because she is super intelligent and very relaxed and very, um, how can I say, self-assured or has a high self-esteem. So she ha has very good leader qualities. And they all respect her for that. Of course, she gets to be fed first um, in the order of the pecking here. And she gets pets first and she gets to be greeted first. And I also try to explain to my visitors to greet her first. Um, so everybody's on the same page. So what we're doing then is uh, when I finished my work, uh, or not my whole work, but like a good chunk of the day in the morning, um, I take them out normally on a fine day on a bushwalk. We have absolutely stunning bushwalks here at the top of the South Island in New Zealand. And although they are not meant to be great walkers, um, and they don't need much exercise at all. They still enjoy very much if we go all out uh, as a tribe on a bushwalk. Of course, the greyhounds on the lead. And uh, uh, if they're in good training, and they are, because we do that in summer pretty much every day, they can walk quite a distance uh, without being overworked or too tired. Then uh, we do our chores, whatever we have to do in town shopping, groceries, whatnot, meeting people, and they hang out in the car. They really love it. It's a second home. I have the back of my truck completely um, transformed into dog beds. It's all for the greyhounds, <laughs> and they, they love it there. Um, and then we come home, and then it's dinner time. And they get a big bowl of home-cooked um, a kichari, which is vegetable-based, 
and uh, mix under some sardines or some dried meat or eggs or um, whatever we have handy and they love their dinner and they are very very happy if I serve dinner. <laughs> Bella is doing a little dance because she gets to eat first uh, around me and the bowl. That's really cute. Um, we'll see if we can actually make some footage of that. Normally if you want to do film a certain behavior of your dog um, it does it all the time but once you have the camera out <laughs> it might not even happen but we'll see what we do. Um, what else can I say about Bella? Um, she's gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. She was known as Blondie before I got her, but I saw her on Trade Me where I found her and I thought that's Bella. <laughs> so she ever since then is named Bella. And actually that's no problem at all because um, the retired greyhounds, they not necessarily have a name and they not necessarily know their name. So the, it's like, it's pretty much like a blank slate. You bring a retired greyhound home and although it's an adult, it doesn't have any puppy nastiness like, you know, being not house trained or chewing everything or you know like what puppies are um, you got an adult dog but still they are blank slate and you can form them so you give them a name you give them a routine you give them uh, the affection they hadn't had before and um, so it completely becomes your dog it's it's different to uh, rescue dogs where they had a pet life before which was probably not nice and they have memories of that um, now, the retired grand has, did not have this kind of life before, so uh, it's very joyful for both to bond and um, find themselves as a team completely new after the adoption. Also amazing is to see how she has de developed her personality. Um, the first weeks or months I had her home, she was very quiet and she was not doing much um, and then she came out of her shelf, I think two months it was, or maybe three. And then she started to do some wonderful things, roaching, for example, or she danced around her football, or um, she even started to open doors because she was observing me and think, oh, well, what she can do, I can do as well. And she's not only open doors with handles, she also opens wrench sliders to the side and she also unlocks the lock of a wrench slider if I lock it up to get um, wherever I am. So she really wants to follow around. However, she's very good alone. She's no hustle. She just lays on her bed and snoozes until I come home. There has never been any destruction um, or any traces found that she did anything else than lying on her bed and waiting till I'm home. Okay, so are you ready for the 10 surprise questions for greyhound owners? Sure. Alrighty, so what is Bella's favorite treat? Bella's favorite treat is a piece, a big piece of dried home baked bread. Alrighty, what is, what was your longest dog walk with Bella? It must have been two and a half hours. Whoa, that's yeah. insane. But having said that, A, my greyhounds are used to go on longer walks, say one hour-ish is, is, is normal. And B, we had a break. I brought water with me and a bowl and we had probably... 15 minutes break and they lay down in the shade and they and it wasn't the shade actually the walk was through the bush um, So yeah, they cope well mm -hmm. Okay, is she allowed on your bed? <laughs> of course she is <laughs> Although she's not sleeping in my bed with me because I have small dogs which uh, which sleep in my bed with me um, She and the other greyhound we have uh, they have their beds next to my bed and they sleep there all night. Having said that, sometimes when I come home and I leave the door open or she might have opened my bedroom door, she might, I find her on my bed, yeah. <laughs> okay, what does Bella do when she's happy? Right, so when 
Bella is happy. She's chattering, which is very cute. And she, she does a funny thing with her tail. The tail is vibrating a little bit like the chattering. So it's chattering on the one side of the dog and, and, and chattering with the tail on the other side of the dog. That's super cute. <laughs> okay, does she sleep in pajamas? Yes, she has very cute pajamas. Um, and she has them on pretty much the sixth winter month. Okay, number six. What does Bella do when she's demanding cuddles? Well, when uh, Bella is demanding cuddles, she is uh, lying down, staring at me. So I won't, it won't be possible not to recognize her. She's uh, staring at me for minutes until I see her. And when I see her, she's dropping her jaw on me and clapping with her teeth. That looks a little bit like, like this. Okay, thank you for the demonstration. <laughs> what is the smartest thing she's ever done? I would say to open not only the doors, including the range slider, but to actually unlock the, the latch of the door. Number eight, does Bella snore? Um, Bella does not snore, as I can recall, no. Uh, what is, is her favorite toy? Her favorite toy is a big fluffy thing that she throws in the air and catches it and chews on it just a few times and then she's pooped after a minute. Alrighty, do you want an additional greyhound? This is the final question, make it count? I would say never say never. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today on Hounds for Life. Our next segment is our how-to segment, that is the maker section where um, this in this episode uh, I'm gonna take you through how to knit a cowl for a greyhound. I know we are heading into summer and we won't need it anymore but I know you guys from the north uh, northern hemisphere you might want to give it a shot and make a really cozy um, something for your greyhound. <laughs> nice! It's yeah. beginners right? It is for beginners so don't shy away it's for Shanna as well. <laughs> I'm such a beginner with knitting. I'm sorry, Gran. <laughs> when you start a knitting project, you want to make sure it fits. So therefore, you have to measure, um, in this case, the neck of your greyhound, and you have to make gauge. That means you knit a piece of 10 by 10 centimeters and count the stitches that you need um, to cast on and the, stitch, and the row stitches in this case are not so important. So I have measured uh, Bella's uh, neck is where the ears are attached 40 centimeters in circumference and 46 centimeters where the shoulders are attached. I want a length of uh, 22 centimeters, that's about the length of her neck. I have made a gauge and found out I need to cast on 30 stitches with needles number 9 millimeter to got 40 centimeters. I will change halfway through the knitting to the 12, 12 millimeter needles. In this case, I will create the ta tapered shape that I need for the cowl. I will bind off the same stitches that I cast on 30 stitches and finally sew the edges together to create a tube, which should have a, a smaller and a wider end and enjoy the lovely cowl. I'm starting with this uh, lovely red color in this cowl. It's gonna be two colored. And with the smaller needle sizes, the number nine. We are taking one end of the yarn and you don't need to bother about a long tail cast on. We're doing a knitted cast on, which is easy to learn for a beginner. So you make a slip knot. Take one needle through the slip knot, pull it tight, not too tight, never tighten things up in knitting too much. Take your working yarn through your finger to tension it. You can either use the right hand, the continental way, or uh, the left hand, continental way, or the right hand for the English way. Uh, whatever your granny <laughs> or your knitting teacher or the friend or your mom told you to do in their tradition. Then you go through the slip stitch with the right needle and pull the yarn from back to front. This is a knit stitch and don't lift this stitch up, just lift the right hand needle with this stitch and a twist on to the left needle. And keep your right needle in, get the next stitch through, 
lift it over your needle, twist it, come from front to back, drop it onto your nettle needing, grab the next one. And so you continue and do your 30 cast on stitches. So now to start your first knitting stitch is you go in the first stitch, you don't turn the work, you stay exactly on the cast on end, you place your right needle from front to back, which is called a knit stitch, see front to back, then you grab your yarn, which is tensioned with your work, working hand, through the stitch, use your thumb to secure the stitch on the right needle and the left thumb to secure the stitch on the left needle. Now this is like you did the cast on, so you're familiar with that. The only difference is that you now carefully slip the stitch off the left needle. So it's only on the right needle. That's your first knit stitch. Let's do the second. Secure with your thumb the stitch next to the working stitch on the left hand needle and with your right thumb the, the, the last stitch on your right needle. So they are not slipping off. Then you go through front to back, through the loop, get your working yarn, bring it through, left thumb goes forward, securing the first stitch on the needle and then you slip it off, thumb up, one down, slips it a little bit forward so you can work the stitch, front to back, this is a knit stitch, grab the yarn, pull it through the, sli uh, the stitch, Place your thumb on and slip it off. Let's do it again. That's a knit row and we're turning the needle around so the tip of the working needle with the working yarn is always facing to the right. Here's your tail. Here's your working yarn. Put the working yarn behind. Remember to tension the working yarn through your fingers around your index finger. Slide the stitch to the front that you want to work with. Secure the second stitch. For the first stitch, I recommend to pull the tail down a little bit so you open up the stitch and again, insert your right needle at the front of the stitch to the back. Slip the yarn from the back to front through the stitch, stitch and slip the stitch off the needle. Work your left thumb down one stitch, secure the stitch with your right thumb and off you go, second stitch. Insert your needle get your yarn through, slip it off the needle. So I'm going now and measure this piece and see how far we are and uh, when we have to change the needles. See, you can see it on the needle here or you can even um, have a gauge um, uh, measure, measure tool that can actually tell you the needle size and this is 12 millimeter, right? Um, I will look up what that is in uh, inches and let you know in the uh, uh, in the video. We have total length from 22. I have already knitted 12 centimeters, so I will knit 10 more centimeters in this larger needle. So the transition is very easy and you don't need to worry about that. You tension your yarn again. You take the larger needle Insert it into your knit. As a knit stitch. And then you get the yarn through and create your first knit stitch with a number 12 millimeter needles. And you will see the stitch is larger, of course, because it's a larger needle and you need more uh, yarn for this. So do the second one. And you work with your thumbs exactly the same as before. Nothing changes here. It's exactly the same. Knit stitch that you had done all the way up to here. Now here comes in the other beautiful yarn. Um, also pure wool, chunky pure wool in this mustard color. And how I show you how to attach it. So you turn your, your knitting around, let just this yarn hang there and like we did before with the tail of the cast on edge, we pull it down a little bit, add the edge of the new yarn to it about this length, have it good, good length so you can work with it, put it together, pull it, tension it, of course you have your working yarn in the working hand tensioned as well. Thumb on the second stitch 
needle through the first stitch from front to back, grab the new yarn through, and it's holding together here, as you can see between my hands, so there is tension. And then you slip it through, and don't worry that it's sloppy, we fix that later. So just keep going, you have to keep going for a few stitches before you leave, before you let go of your hand. So let's work five stitches, pull a little bit on the red yarn and a little bit on the mustard yarn and just leave them hanging here and they are quite secured. So nothing will happen there. And you continue to work. So I'm going to finish off this row. Just quickly measure it again if I'm really happy now because I added two more rows. And I think that was spot on because I am actually not even, yeah, I am at 22 now and the cast is actually perfect. Oh, casting off. We are creating a nice cast off edge that does not need to be too flexible because remember it slides over from the narrow part to, of the neck. So this is actually not stretching a lot. So we do a normal slip stitch cast off. We knit the first stitch as we always do, secure it, don't pull it tight. We knit the second as we always do and secure it as we always do. Now pull down the fabric so you create a space in the first stitch where you can insert your left hand needle to the front of the, le the front leg from front to back. Secure the tip of the right needle with your thumb, gently slide it, do don't let go of the fabric until you can slip through the other stitch. And here you go, you got one bind off. So do the same, a knit stitch, normal knit stitch, take it off. So you have again your two knit stitches here and now pull down the fabric here to create a bit of a space at the first stitch and slip the first stitch over the second stitch. Securing the tip of the right hand needle with your left thumb and then slip it off. This is the last stitch. Now we have one left, right? Obviously we have one stitch less. So what you do is you pull, you make a big loop, pull your yarn through and tighten this, not too tight. Just tighten it, keep your thumb and your index finger here and just have a nice and secure edge. Right, and this is now our finished cowl. Look at that. That's the right side and that's the wrong side. And cut it here. That's it. So we are done with this yarn and then we thread through this piece through a wool needle. This is the right side so we fold the right side on top of each other. And don't worry about any loose ends. You want it neatly on top of each other and you can use your pins to pin it together if you are unsure, right? And that is then how the edge looks. You want the color change here to match, right? That's important for the look. And that's all looking good. So what we do it, do we insert our sewing needle, our wool needle with the wrong side up and the right side inside. He sees the pearl bumps, this is the wrong side. And then we make a mattress stitch, a very easy stitch. The only thing you have to worry about is that you are not pulling it too tight, not too loose and you are matching every pearl bump. See the pearl bumps here? You want each pearl bump to be sewn together with one stitch, right? And this, in this way, you are keeping your colors clean, right? And there's the next color here. So we go through the pearl bump, one and one, and just pull the wool through. Not too tight, always loosen it up a little bit. And then we have the next pearl bumps that we want to thread the needle through. And we're coming to the last one. So we want to go through the knot, our slip knot, where we started our knitting from. Going through the edge of the last stitch and pull our yarn through and do that twice. 
this time. So we're going again through the same stitch just to make sure and we pull this a little bit tighter and just to make sure that we have a really even edge and we do. Look at that. That is perfect. And you always go in your sewing seam when you um, weave an end. And now the magic happens. We turn it inside out and here is our cowl. Look at this beautiful shape. Does it not look like a greyhound neck? The first day of the week is of, of the fortnight, I have to say, is uh, Mary Lou. Um, you're gonna see her zooming around in her foster home with Debbie. She's in private foster care, very close to um, Hans for Life's kennels. And she's a, such a sweet girl, isn't she? She's so yeah. sweet. I want to take her home. Me too. Too many, too many. Not I'm here with Mary Lou, or otherwise known as Lulu. Um, we're here in Spring Creek. She's been on foster care with Debbie for about three months now. She's, she really loves it. As you can see, she's super happy and she loves a treat. Hey, do you want a treat? Mary Lou really likes to play. She's super silly when she's playing, but it only lasts for very short bursts of time, as common with many greyhounds. She is a real people greyhound and loves to sit by the fire as long as there are people around. However, when she's home alone, she's a really good girl. Um, she's quite happy to be home alone. Um, and she's a wonderful girl. I hope you have enjoyed the show so far. We are now coming to our last bit of the show. We are taking you around uh, through a, um, a walk through Picton and show you the beautiful little marina town that we are living close by here. And hope we see you again in the next episode. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Peace. Little darling, it's been a long, long racing season. Little darling, it's time to rest and find a home. Here comes the hounds, didn't you know? Here comes the hounds, and I say it's for life. Hounds for life. Hounds for life. Tapatanui is the place. <laughs> and anyways, it's <laughs> really. Um, how he's taking us? Oh no, I don't need that. Let's cut. On the. She just fell. <laughs> she was falling. She just fell off. Oh, bless her. <laughs>